Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Good morning, sports fans. We're here at the Lacombe Canola Palooza on June 28th, and I'm here with my very good friend Scott Gillis of Azera Effect Productions, who you may recall from our disease videos, insect videos, and extension media that we have on our website. A uh, world class videographer, has a whole host of film and video experience, and we're here today to help people take better field pictures. We get, as Canola Council agronomists and retail agronomists, pictures of problems in the field on a regular basis. Something like this, with a very focused background and a very blurry foreground where the plant of concern is. With a question like, what is this? And it's probably rude to say, well, it looks like a size nine. So what we're trying to do here today is teach people how to use their smartphone to take better pictures of things that they find in field. So we've got a few plants that we dug up here and we can go through a few of the fundamentals on how to take better pictures. Uh, first with smartphones because everyone's got a smartphone with a camera in their pocket these days. And we also do a little bit more of an advanced one with some uh, SLRs. So we've got a couple of different macro lenses um, and a few different options to play with that opens up the possibilities dramatically. Okay, one basic photography tip that would help in, your, in identifying plant issues is to isolate the background. Even if this photo was, even if the subject, subject matter was in focus, um, the fact that it's surrounded by the same type of material directly behind it makes it hard to, to see what you're looking at. Whereas if you take a, just even a piece of paper with a white backdrop, that makes a big difference. Or if you have, a black laptop that's also really nice to isolate your your plant subject matter so that you can uh, have a nice clean background and not get it all cluttered um, also shade and light is a big issue with photography a lot of times this is kind of overexposed maybe because it was too bright and sunny if you can find something to shade it even just a book or a piece of paper we have like a fancy shade and lighting device you don't really need that just anything to to shade your subject matter so that the sun isn't just bringing the highlights too high on the photo uh, so you actually can take pretty fantastic pictures with smartphones these days the processes are pretty fantastic uh, their their focus distances are really really great you don't need to get right up to it to use the uh, to use the camera because here I'm just a centimeter or two away from the material and the background is perfectly in focus with this green smudge in the way. So if we back off a little bit, we can actually use the zoom feature to find some damage or area of concern. So let's go down to the roots. Uh, and tapping on the area of the screen that you want focused is how you focus these obviously. And being as steady as possible, uh, take the picture and we actually have a really nice picture of the uh, roots and root hairs here that we can zoom in on for more detail. I think the most important thing that I would tell people to do though is to take a lot of pictures. So storage is free, storage is cheap. Um, take 10 or 12 pictures of the same thing and your chances of getting one that are properly in focus that we can then use to make a diagnosis uh, via Twitter or email or text is a whole lot better. So the light here in our tent is actually pretty great for taking pictures right now. It's a pretty uniform light, not a whole lot of shadows around it. Uh, outside the tent, we've got some cloud cover as well, so we don't have horrible shadows. On a really bright, sunny day, what we do wind up with, though, is very, very bright light with very, very dark shadows that uh, really obscure the, the subject. Uh, so in cases like that, especially on the brighter, sunnier days, turn your flash on. So it's not gonna work as well here because it's the, the light is actually quite good, but you can get into these areas and show them with a whole lot more detail to eliminate that contrast from the really bright sunlight. So there are some really neat little smartphone kits you can buy at drugstores and photo stores uh, online in a bunch of different places. I got mine from photojojo.com. And what it is, is a little steel ring that sticks to the outside of your lens. 
and you've got these magnetized telephoto and wide angle lenses that stick right to the lens. So you get that nice and centered. And it really increases the range of that camera. So we can get right in and right close to the material and get some really good quality photos. Kits like this usually come with uh, a fisheye, a telephoto, so that you don't need to use as much of the digital zoom and you can get higher resolution pictures that then you can edit and, and crop on your camera and still maintain the, the really fine detail of an insect face or, you know, Insects are notoriously difficult to take pictures of. Uh, they don't want to stick around and get their pictures taken quite frequently. So substituting for an insect today, we have a um, dinosaur. So if we hide that in the crop as though it were an insect, we can get right in close to it. Standing back a ways off so you don't scare it away, we can focus on his nose. And here we have magazine quality photos of a dinosaur in your canola. So yeah, the, I guess the idea behind this session here was really to help people take better pictures in field. We wind up doing a lot more diagnosing um, over social media and uh, via text, via email these days. And it's a lot easier to get uh, a better diagnosis when we've got better quality pictures. And don't look at your camera as though it were a film camera and you only have 20 pictures to take and two weeks to get them back. Uh, take a lot of pictures, play around with them, take 30 or 40 pictures of the same thing and your chances of getting one that has the subject perfectly in focus is a whole lot better.